I don't believe in humans. Taloth poked the campfire with his stick. They're just something the grown-ups made up to scare us. Like bad beasts or grat hounds. Are too real. Baka pounded his chest proudly. My dad even fought some. He was a couple of years tall of senior, which made him tend to think of himself as in charge, even though none of them were old enough to have been granted ranks yet. He did not. Protested Sir. On her lap sat her sister Peckett, still little more than a larvae. Sura was the eldest of the four of them, although as a female she was lower in the hierarchy. Her egg sacs were just beginning to bulge for the first time, a fact that Taloth certainly hadn't failed to notice. Id too. He's in the army. Was sent to suppress a slave revolt on Sadik 4, but... Okay, now I know you're making it up. Scoffed Sura. There was no slave revolt on Sadik 4, it would have been on the news. You think they tell you about the successful slave revolts? Baka smirked. But hey, if you don't want to hear the story. Sura sighed. Fine. Go on then. If you insist. Baka sat upright, enjoying the attention. Anyway, they were sneaking up on the slave camp. It was the middle of a windstorm, zero visibility. Then out of nowhere. Bang. Dead. Bang. Dead. Hardened soldiers dropping like flitters. Didn't stand a chance. So, how did your dad get out then? Sura asked. Now she was curious. How do you think? He ran. The others rocked backwards in surprise. To so openly admit that his father had displayed such cowardice was uncharacteristic for any of their race, let alone Baka. The Inquisitors didn't shoot him for desertion. That was standard practice. Even if the risk of death when fighting the enemy was high, if the risk of not fighting was higher then it was better to fight. Basic motivational theory. Nah. Baka frilled his ear spines. They were the first to go down. That's how the humans think, no respect for social rank. They cut off the head first. Well why didn't they execute him when he got back? He was the only survivor. He is like, a human expert or something now, I guess. An expert? All he did was run away. Which is more than most can manage. Baka frowned. He got out alive. Ain't cowardice to run from a human, he told me. Just good sense. Fine then. Sura crossed her four claws across her plastroon. So, how did they do it? How did they observe through the windstorm? What makes humans so scary? It's radiation. The what now? Radiation. Baka repeated. They don't observe with sound like we do, they observe with radiation. Like heat and stuff. Even with wind roaring in a gale, they can observe as clearly as a summer calm. Sura didn't seem particularly impressed. So, just stay away from heat sources. That doesn't seem so scary. There is a big ball of gas emitting radiation in the middle of sky, genius. What are you going to do, only live at the other side of the world? Even then it doesn't have to be that much radiation for them to observe you with it, maybe you don't even notice it. The four of them were becoming very aware of the heat of the campfire. All of a sudden it felt a lot less comforting. That's right, they could be observing us right now, and we wouldn't even know it. Hackett began to screech. Sura sighed. Great. Now you've upset her. Better that she knows, countered Baka. Better you all know. They're keeping to the fringe worlds for now. 
liberating a few slave camps, testing our limits, but they'll get here soon enough. You wanna know this stuff, or will you rather die? He smirked. Maybe we should put out the fire, I've got other ways of keeping you warm, Sura. Ew. Sura stood up, Peckett still screeching in her arms. You are disgusting, and I'm going home. She marched off into the cold night. Wait, Sura. Baka roared, then rushed off in pursuit. I didn't mean it like that. Come back, please. I don't believe in humans. Taloth gathered his blankets around himself and scooted a little further away from the fire. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description.